Hello, and welcome to Let's Play Portal! Okay, so it's not the most original of Let's Plays, and it wasn't really one I was intending on doing, but since I'm still kind of in the middle of a couple of pretty big moves, I needed something that was quick to do and didn't really need any preparations, and this definitely fits the bill on both counts. And for the two people out there uh, that are out there that don't know this game, Portal was developed by Valve Software and released in 2007 as part of a bundle called the Orange Box, together with Half-Life 2 Episode 2 and Team Fortress 2. Portal was based on a student game called Narbacular Drop, I hope I pronounced that right, that used the same concept of portals, and after seeing that game, Valve hired the developers of Narbacular Drop to build Portal. A small game built by a small team, Portal seems primarily intended as a test for the portal mechanic rather than a full game of its own, but the game unexpectedly became massively popular and led to what is possibly the most quoted internet meme since all your base are belong to us. The game has definitely been hyped up the wazoo, so the question is... Is it actually going to live up to that hype? Most of you will probably already know the answer to that, but for those of you who don't... Let's find out. And um, we can actually start from any point in the game, um, because I already finished it. But we're going to start from the beginning, strangely enough. And we're already in the game. Nope, no introduction, although there does appear to be a countdown, and some hints indicating how I should move. And a radio, playing some music. Hello, and again, welcome to the Aperture Science Computer Aided Enrichment Center. We hope your brief detention in the relaxation vault has been a pleasant one. Your specimen has been processed, and we are now ready to begin the test proper. Before we start, however, keep in mind that although fun and learning are the primary goals of all enrichment center activities, serious injuries may occur. For your own safety and the safety of others, please refrain from Turn back. The portal will open in three, two, one. Aha! Well, um, I guess I'd better be certain not to whatever it was she said. And that appears to be a portal. Very clever way of introducing us to the concept. And the more observant among us may notice that that is me walking around there. In the uh, somewhat stilted way of moving the source engine seems to use. You may notice that I am female, well, no, not me, but my character is, and that uh, I have these weird things on my legs, which are uh, apparently some kind of stilts that um, are supposed to explain why you can survive falling from much greater height in this game than you can in Half-Life 2, which I think is set in the same universe, although I never played Half-Life 2, so not 100% certain. That's not really much of an explanation, because how would that prevent you from breaking your neck if you fell on your head? Apparently it does, somehow. Other than that, this game does not give any further explanations. We were in this room. Presumably we were sleeping here. And I wonder if that was voluntarily, considering that. Might be oxygen, though. Some kind of monitoring equipment. Aperture. And... Something ID number 234, which... Maybe it's sus subject ID or something? Could be. In which case, it's me. I also have a toilet, or what passes for it... The aforementioned uh, radio. I can pick that up with E. And yes, you just hover things in front of your hands. Uh, in front of your body. With your mind, I think. See, isn't that how you hold things? It is how I hold things, because I am magic. 
I don't like this music. Too big to go in the toilet to do. Coffee cup! X coffee cup. And a um, clipboard, which is rather too tiny to read, so I can sort of get closer this way. Portal test sequence hazard identification card. Okay. Wait. These are hazards? The bottom right one appears to be a cake. Very hazardous. Let's, let's just drop that there. Okay, I guess the idea is to get go through this portal-like thing. Which is actually a portal, so I don't know why I called it that. Because there's no other way out. And I'm getting really tired of this music, so let's go. We Now we're on the outside. Yes, we can and will violate the laws of physics in this game rather blatantly most of the time. Let's see. We are apparently 0, zero out of 19. Must be computer programmers here because they're numbering from 0. And there are a number of these symbols which were apparently the hazard things from the clipboard. Let's see what they are. This one appears to drop some kind of thing. The same thing can also hit us in the head. Apparently not a good thing. The rest is not enabled at the current time. This one looks hazardous. No drinking water, I guess. And cake. I don't see why that's hazardous, unless it's poisonous cake. We're being watched. It's following us around. There may also be people up there, I guess, watching our progress through these tests that that computer was talking about. What the hell is that? Some kind of pressure pad? Indeed, it is a pressure pad. It opens the door, but then it closes again. Those are those symbols again. Aha! So a box drops from the tube and hits us in the head. Well, let's hope that we can prevent the latter part. Seems pretty straightforward. Box goes on here. Excellent. Please proceed into the chamber lock after completing each test. First, however, note the incandescent particle field across the exit. This aperture science material events a patient grip will vaporize any unauthorized equipment that passes through it. For instance, the aperture science weighted storage cube. In other words, you cannot take anything with you from level to level. Aperture Laboratories. Not a very smooth ride in this elevator. Let's hope it's safe. You may have noticed by now that there's not an awful lot of background info given. Zero one out of nineteen. And no hazards. Well that's nice. We do have a camera. And a why is there a radio up there? I don't know. Please place the weighted storage cube on the 1500 megawatt aperture science heavy duty super colliding super button. I'm guessing that's this thing. Also, the radio is not heavy enough. Oh. Oh! Huh. It seems to switch around by itself. I think we need the cube. Ah! I was not fast enough. Is that open on the top? No. There we go! Perfect. Please move quickly to the chamber lock, as the effects of prolonged exposure to the button are not part of this test. Button's dangerous! Let me out, let me out! Oh, it listened! Um... Yay, now we can go outside. 
radio screwed up my ability to place the box on the button. There we go! I don't know why we're doing this, or why we're even here, or what it is in particular that we're doing, or what it accomplishes, but it sure seems to be fun. We're just jumping through portals and putting boxes on buttons. I'm sure that serves some purpose. You're doing very well. Thank you. Please be advised that a noticeable taste of blood is not part of any test protocol, but is an unintended side effect of the Aperture Science Material Emancipation Grip, which may, in semi-rare cases, emancipate dental fillings, crowns, tooth enamel, and teeth. But I like my teeth. Two out of 19. Well, at least we're making progress. No hazards. Hey, it seems that the portal here is being generated by that device. Those of you who have seen the developer commentary knew that originally there was no timer on this door and nobody actually stopped to look down here, so they didn't see the device. That's why they put the timer on there. These and other fun facts can be had by listening to the developer commentary while playing the game, and I'm not going to rehash all of them, if only because I don't actually remember all of them. This uh, seems like a very, very unsafe idea. I don't think I should stand here, to be perfectly honest with you. Huh. It doesn't seem to have harmed me. That is not over. We. Very good. You are now in possession of the Aperture Science handheld portal device. With it, you can create your own portals. These interdimensional gates have proven to be completely safe. The device, however, has not. Do not touch the operational end of the device. Do not look directly at the operational end of the device. Oops, I just did that. Do not submerge the device in liquid, even partially. Most importantly, under no circumstances should you... You're doing that on purpose, aren't you? Okay, well I guess we'd better keep those warnings in mind. Also, if this is any kind of wormhole type technology, which it kind of looks like, then, to be perfectly honest, the amount of energy that would be required to generate such a wormhole means that I probably don't want to be in the same country as the operational end of this device. Hmm. We can place the blue portal, apparently. To ensure the safe performance of all authorized activities, do not destroy vital testing apparatus. And that's one of the things you can do with it. Mock up the cameras. Serves no purpose, but it is possible. You can also create these sort of whole mirror effects, which is also kind of neat, and throw yourself off high sir of uh, high heights. Wait, what? It didn't come out right. Which is why the game needs to explain that how you can survive that, which they sort of did with those stills. I guess. Um, let's see. Well, we need to get over there. But we need to get over there via there. And actually, there's no puzzle here, because now that we've got the device... ...the door opened, so we can just leave. And although, um... ...many things are emancipated by this emancipation grid... ...the device is not one of them. I'm gonna call it Portal Gun from now on, because just repeating the words THE DEVICE over and over is getting kind of old. Well, we got ourselves a portal gun. I think we'll see what we can do with it in the next video.